everyone. You're watching Indus Television. I'm Reena Augustine, the founder of Red Carpet Functions. And the mission behind doing these amazing interviews is to introduce you to the people who are making a difference in the community. And I have the privilege to introduce Dr. Dinesh, who was the first quadriplegic medical intern in Queensland and the second person to graduate medical school with quadriplegia in Australia. Dr. Dinesh earned a Bachelor of Laws prior to completing his Doctor of Medicine at the Griffith University. He has completed an advanced clerkship in radiology at the Harvard University. Halfway through the medical school, he was involved in a catastrophic motor vehicle accident that caused a cervical spinal cord injury for him. As a result of this injury and experiences, Dr. Dinesh has been an advocate for inclusivity in medicine and the workplace generally. He is a founding member of Doctors with Disabilities Australia. Dr. Dinesh is currently a resident medical officer at the Gold Coast University Hospital. He is a lecturer at the Griffith University and adjunct research fellow at the Menzies Health Institute of Queensland. He has research interests in the spinal cord injury, particularly with novel rehabilitation techniques. Dr. Dinesh is the Gold Coast University Hospital's representative in the Australian Medical Association Queensland's Council of Doctors in Training. He is a member of the Scientific Advisory Committee of the Perry Cross Spinal Research Foundation, Disability Advisory Council at Griffith University and the Ambassador Council at the Hopkins Centre. He is an ambassador for Physical Disability Australia and he is a doctor for the Gold Coast Titans Physical Disability Rugby Team. Dr. Dinesh was the Gold Coast Hospital and Health Services Junior Doctor of the Year in 2018. He was awarded the Medal of Australia in 2019. He was the third Australian to be awarded a Henry Viscari Achievement Award. And Dr. Dinesh is the Queensland Australian of the Year for 2021. Welcome, Dr. Dinesh. Hey, oh my you. God, <laughs> fantastic. You are such an inspiration to so many people out there. Thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> so you studied law mm. and, and what was the reason that you, you know? Well, uh, I think um, when you're growing up, I think some people know exactly what they want to do. And from when they're a kid, they say, I want to be a doctor or I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a pilot or whatever it might be. Uh, but for me, I think I had a bunch of different ideas about what I wanted to do. And I didn't really have a particular passion. But my mom's been a very important figure in my life, always. And I remember talking to her at one point and I said, what do you think I should do? And we talked and talked and talked and she said, well, maybe you should study law. And I thought about it and I thought, that's a great idea. I'll go and study law. Not because I was particularly passionate about it at the time and not because I um, woke up every day wanting to be a lawyer. Um, I just thought it was a good idea. <laughs> so, uh, you know, at the age of 18 um, or 19, I can't even remember mm -hmm. now, I went and started law school. And that was how I got there. Wow. wow. And now you're a doctor. And yeah. supporting so many people and inspiring and telling them that nothing can stop you. Yeah. So tell us about it. Uh, I guess how I became a doctor is uh, probably a good place to start. Um, when I was going through law school, I ended up getting depression and anxiety. And uh, I got panic attacks every time I went out. And it was pretty bad at one point. I was in a very dark place. And um, I think a lot of people go through these things in every community. It's important to recognize, I think, because uh, going through those things was a lot more debilitating to me than the spinal cord injury ever has been. But uh, it was one of the most important points in my life and it's something that I'm grateful for. And it's one of the best things that happened to me because it was an opportunity for me to rethink life and rethink my direction. I think when we go, go through some of those things, it's sometimes a bit of a warning sign or a turning point that tells us, hey, maybe you need to think about your life and consider where you're going. And at the same time, I was interacting with a lot of doctors and the health system. 
And, uh, you know, my mum, she likes this saying these days that by helping one person, you may not change the world, but you'll change the world for them. And when I started getting through the depression and everything, I felt like a new person. My whole world has changed. So I thought, what if I could do this for someone? Uh, what if I could change their world, even if it's just one person? If I could do that for one person in my whole life, yeah. I, I thought that would be a pretty cool thing. And that's how I decided to do medicine because I realized that it's a profession where you can uh, just use your hands or even your head and make a difference in someone's life every day. So today I work in the emergency department in the busiest emergency department in Australia. And it's amazing. Sometimes I get around work and I think I can't believe I get to do this for a living every day. So I'm very, very grateful for my job. Wow. I love it. So in the start, you said that your mother has been somebody who has been there for you. You know, Dr. Dinesh, people don't realize how important parents are, mm. you know. Um, coming from a background where I lost my parents very young and the only people who will look after you than anybody else in the world is your parent. And recognizing that what you, as you mentioned, that your mom was there beside you, I think every youngster, every person out there should realize that. Um. There is nothing in this universe, I think, uh, like the bond between a mother and child and the love of a mum. Uh, for me, that's been the case all my life and particularly after the accident. But I always see mums come into our hospital um, with their kids um, who are going through chronic diseases or um, long-term challenges and it's you know it's always a mom it's always a mom that's there it's always um, I mean we've got some good dads around too but I just have a soft spot for the mums that are taking that journey with their kid and sometimes they do it uh, until they're adults and sometimes they do it until they're elderly mm -hmm. so it's um, a really special thing to see I think even in even in the wild you see that bond um Australia is a diverse and multicultural society. Mm. We get people from, you know, every background. You must be coming across so many multicultural people who come to you, yes? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really... Um, we get so much diversity at both work and in my personal life. Um, but I just see them as people, you know. We get to live in this amazing country. Um, we get to enjoy all these amazing things, even the nature. Yes. Uh, I think we're extremely lucky to be a part of this place. You grew up in uh, Sri Lanka or you're from here? I was 10 years old when we moved here. Okay, and what made you... Birthday. Yeah. Oh, wow. What made you come to Australia? I think it's the same thing that makes anyone move to this country, right? It's a better life. Um, it's a peaceful life and it's a place full of opportunities. And... Um, I, I really do think it's the land of the free here. Mm -hmm. I do think that it's the land of opportunity. I think that you are free to do whatever you want in this country. You're free to live however you want. Um, you can live peacefully. Uh, you can live knowing that your right to health care and education and all those things are provided for you. So I think those are the reasons why we came here. Yeah. And um, I, living in this country, the opportunities and the voice the voices can be heard. Um, especially when um, growing up, you come from, I come from a country where, you know, the voice of women are not heard that much. Um, it's changed now. Um, is, is that the reason why now we think that now Australia is the opportunity that when you wake up tomorrow, you can do anything and everything as long as it's not hurting anybody? I do think that. Having said that, there are still challenges for some people. I think the gender imbalance is still there, although it's not as pronounced. Um, and I think there's uh, people with disabilities struggle with certain things. But still, I think um, we're trying to make a good thing better in this country. Um, whereas uh, I think a lot of other places on earth are trying to make challenging situations good still. Yes.
Dr. Dinesh, you said that, you know, you were in a place in a depressive state and, and overcoming that, if anybody out there is going through that, how can they get out of it? What is the tip that you can give to them? See, it's hard because everyone has their own journey and everyone has their own challenges. So it's hard to be prescriptive about how one should get out of it. For me, you know, it was a journey. It wasn't an easy journey. But it was a journey about finding myself. It's a journey about searching for myself. Um, and it was about keeping an open mind. I guess the one thing that you always need to remember is that everything in life is temporary and it's transient. So when you're feeling in the pits of despair and if you're feeling like there's nothing left, um, there will be a better day. There's always a better day. And there's always someone worse off than you. Always. I would hate to meet the person that is the worst off in this entire world out of 7 billion people or whatever. But I can guarantee it, the chances are there's someone worse off than you. So I think those two things, when you're at your worst, it's probably an important thing to remember. Um, but it's your own journey. And I think these things are opportunities. Challenges are opportunities either to change ourselves and find a new direction or to find yourself. So there are times that people want to give up because there are things that happen to a lot of people and they, at that moment, at that minute, you think this is it, you know? What, when you were in that ICU, when you were lying down and you wanted to not give up, what was that one thing that kept you going? Um, there's something that I carry to this day and that's being grateful for the things that I do have. And even when things are really hard, I think it helps. These days, every morning when I get up, I think about three things that I'm grateful for. And I try to do that before I go to bed as well. And there's always something to be grateful for, even if it's just being alive. You say, thank God I'm alive. Or, um, and I think even in those situations, if you can try and be thankful for a couple of things, um, it will help you get through because you'll at least realize the things that you have. Um, and I think gratitude is a really, really important thing. You know, it's um, because gratitude allows you to appreciate the things you have and it gets rid of that want, um, gets rid of that need and makes grounds you back in what you do have. I think it helps you to be more giving as well. Because life is not really about looking inward and wanting things and needing things. It's about what we can give. And I think gratitude helps us do that. Wow. So you have to be grateful for life. You've got to be grateful for everything. Every single thing, yeah. right? Waking up in the morning. Yeah. For where you live, for breathing, for the meal you have. And I would say to be in this amazing country, Australia. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> I'm grateful to be having this chat with you as well. Same here. Dr. Dinesh, it is a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Rina. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.